If you will, stand with us out of honor to God's word. We're going to start reading in Joshua chapter 24, starting in verse 14. This is Joshua talking to the people. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. We need to get back to that. There's a lot of that has been missing now. Um, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord." And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us out of, uh, uh, up and uh, our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, in which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among the people throughout whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us, all the people, even the Amorites, which dwell in the land, therefore we will ser also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, this is very interesting, ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After, he, after that, he hath done uh, you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, he said, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Brother Ken, if you'll lead us in prayer. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, God, for another opportunity to be in your house. I pray, dear Lord, that you just bless this message, Lord, tonight, God, just to help us, Lord, to understand your word, God. Bless Brother Derek, Lord, as he preaches. I pray, dear Lord, you continue to go with this church, Lord. Help us, dear God, to continue to grow. Help us, Lord, to be the example we need to be everywhere we go, Lord. I pray, God, that you continue to help us and just bless, Lord, as only you can tonight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know if this one's going to wind up going on Facebook. There might be a whole lot of editing if it does, so... I just want to say this, in a week from today, there's going to be a lot of happy, elated people. In a week from today, there's going to be a lot of depressed people. No matter what happens next Tuesday, there's going to be a lot of people that are just ecstatic. There's going to be a lot of people that are, we're done. The reason I felt God really impressed this on my heart, this message, is no matter what happens, it ain't over till God says it's over. We can't put our faith and trust in the outcome of one election. How many elections have we had in our history? Now, if God says it's over, it don't matter who you elect. It's over. But what I am saying, what you can do, and again, you may gonna have to do a lot of editing and that's fine, you need to get out there and vote. If you have not voted, you need to make your voice be known. What happened here in this verse? How are you going to tie this together, Brother Derek? Well, it was really impressed on my heart. We've been dealing with threes, and we're about to see another three, another set of three. And this is how it all ties in. Number one, he says, choose you this day whom you will serve. And he basically put the ball in their court. And they couldn't just sit there quiet. They had to make their decision. Now, when you go out there and vote, I want to say there is no perfect candidate, but you know there is one standing for right and one standing for wrong. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Right. You have to pray about it, but I'm just saying do some serious soul searching and some serious praying, and don't just sit at home. You have to make your voice be known mm -hmm. because it's in this day and time we have an advantage that other countries don't have. We can let our voice be known by simply going to a ballot box. Others have to literally pull out their guns and fight for their life. Don't take that for granted. Get up and get out there. I've said that. But with that being said, that's not the message. If you'll realize what happened right here, 
There were three institutions that God has given to us. That is government. That is the home. And that is the church. Them are the three things that God has instituted for our benefit. And we, as a group of Americans, as a group of Christian Americans, sometimes we get a little sidetracked. We think if we can get the government straightened out, if we can get Washington straight, our problems are going to be fixed. That's not how it works. We think, I'm going to even say this, we think if we can get the church straightened out, all our problems are going to be fixed. That's not how it works. You know what he said? We need to get back to this. Joshua is the one saying this. And who is Joshua? He's the leader of the country. He might as well have been president. He was the leader of Israel at the time. And did he say, put your trust in me, I'm going to fix all your problems. That's not what Joshua said. Joshua had a a great, clear understanding of how this worked. You are not going to get Washington straightened out, and that's going to get our churches straightened out, and the churches are going to get our homes straightened out. We've got this thing completely vice versa. What does Joshua say? He says you're going to have to take a stand. And the problem is with us Christians in our day and time, we will not take a stand. We'd rather sit at home in our comfort zone. But he says, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, you've got to make a choice. There is no sitting on the comfort zone. A choice will be made. You're going to have to make a decision. By sitting on the couch and doing nothing is a decision. He says, choose you this day whom you will serve. The gods, uh, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. I like what he said. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, as for me and my house. Brother Ken, I cannot speak for you and your house. You know what, Brother Harold? I cannot speak for you and your house. You know what, Brother Chad? I cannot speak for you and your house. But you know what I can speak for? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't say might. He didn't say maybe. I'll think about it. He made a definite statement in front of all those million Jews. He says, I am going to serve the Lord no matter what your decision is. I am not making any bones about it. You can make your choice. And that's the beautiful thing about Christianity compared to other religions. Christianity, all we're required to do is give them the truth. They are supposed to make the choice from there. You are not supposed to make someone decide to follow Christ, you're supposed to let God make that decision for them. Start dealing with that heart. You can't make them, but see, all the other religions say, do this or die. Follow us or die. That's not Christianity. You are supposed to present the truth and let them make the choice just like Joshua did here. Give them the truth. And if you go to the verses above, he laid out the whole long spiel about what God had done for them. He says, now make a choice. And here's the problem. This is what attacks our homes. This is why the world is attacking our homes. This is why the devil is attacking our homes. They know themselves. If we can get the home, we've got the country. If we can get our kids turning on the parents, we've got the country. Hmm. They coming to get me. But what he said, notice, Joshua being the leader of the country says, I know what it takes. We've got to start at home. And we, what's the problem is we have got our roles in the home so mixed up that that's the reason our country is so mixed up. You're exactly right. If we could get back to the basics of the home... Our country would start working itself out. Men should be men, women should be women, and children should be children. Hey, that's right. It's not really rocket science. 
And again, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but it's time that we, and I know Brother Adam, he would say the same thing. It's not, it's not in this church, but we need to have it. We have a lot of churches that will not say this. They're too afraid to get behind a pulpit and speak the truth. And what happened with Joshua, the leader of the country, the president, if you will, said it's going to start at home, people. So no matter what happens next Tuesday night, don't come in with your head held high if we win or your head held low if we lose. Because you still have a job to do. The job ain't over. Right. I have a young daughter, seven years old. I still have many years with her. And I have my son who is five years old. I still have many years of a battle to instill in them what is right, what is wrong, no matter what happens at this time next week. I still have a job to do. So there's no, we should not be on this roller coaster of emotions where we're too high or we're too low because we have children watching us. Where is our faith really in? Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. You should do your job. I still say it. But this is the most important part. And I want you to see some things. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm just going to lay it out what the Bible says. Because if the Bible don't say it, you don't have any business believing it. But if the Bible says it, you better follow it. What does he say? Ephesians chapter 5. This is not preached because I'm just telling you, a lot of these preachers like to tippy-toe around these verses. But we don't need to tippy-toe because it's the Word of God. And while we're tippy-toeing, we're having people getting confused. And there is a reason behind all this. This is the problem. When I'm at work, you know what they tell us? You have like a golden circle. You have the what, the how, and the why. Everybody always starts out with the what, and they never make it down to the why. If you start out with the why, people will buy into it more. Oh, you know what? That makes sense. Now I understand. And then they want to know the how, how to do it, and what we're talking about. But you got to know the why first. So let's see what Paul is writing here. He says in verse 21, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present, unto, uh, present himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that should be holy and without blemish. So ought men all, uh, to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Get that. For no man ever has yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it, cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you um, in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, I want you to see something about that. That, that gets very controversial in this day and time. You should not be speaking like that, Derek. I even know Candace Cameron Bure come out and says how she was submissive to her husband. And she took so much flack for that in this day and time of woman's liberation. <coughs> Understand what the Bible is really saying. It's not saying a woman is below a man. Right. It's not. If you take it that way, you've taken it the wrong way. Notice where the Bible says the uh, woman came from, from the side. Not from the foot for you to trample on. And not from the head for them to be dominant over the man. To walk side by side. And I want you to see what it is. I can testify to this. Notice how he says the man to love the wife. 
I mean, in other passages, he will say, you know, we need to love one another and stuff like that. But notice how he's really harping. Man, love your wife. Right. Woman, show reverence to your husband. <laughs> Why? You notice how women are built? They are more emotional. Let's just be honest. Women are more emotional. Can I get a witness on that? Can we agree to that? Okay, I get a yes. Okay. Women are built upon emotion. Men, I'm going to challenge you first. Because we just said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Men, I am challenging you first. Me as a man myself, I'm challenging myself. When it comes around, me and my wife, if this don't work for you, that's fine. But me and my wife on Valentine's, we don't really do anything except go out to um, Red Lobster where we have our first date. But we don't really buy each other stuff. Why? Because we have something we call Wonderful Husband and Wonderful Wife Day. And it can be any day of the year. And what I do is I'll just come in and surprise her with something. She don't even have to ask for it. I can maybe see she's having a rough time. And she comes in home from work and she just sees everything and it just makes her day. Why? Because she needs to know she's loved. She is built upon that emotions. That is how God wired her. She needs to feel that. And we as men say, ah, uh, she knows I love her. You need to show her that you love her. <laughs> no, I, but I'm, I'm being serious. When we dated, when we dated, we always held the door for her, didn't we? We always bought her flowers or we bought her candy or we did, we did that, we did in our own little way. <laughs> we did in our own little way. We went a little above and beyond to try to win her. You know what? If we don't continue to do that along the way, we were just lying to her. We were lying to her. We were saying, you know what? This is what I'm going to do for you if you will be with me. And then we get the ring on her finger, and then we forgot how we treated her when we were dating. This is hard message, y'all. It's hitting me too. I'm a man. We need to treat her just like we did when we dated her. She still is important. She still needs to hear that from you. She still needs to hear, I love you. And she still needs to be showed that you love her. You want to know why? She's, she's had a rough day. And the devil has been telling her in her ear, you know what? They, everything you do, they take it for granted. They take you for granted. They don't really care for you like they used to. You don't think the devil don't tell that to these ladies? Uh, I'm getting a lot of nervous looks on this, but am I speaking the truth? Men, you've got to show love. Don't just say, she knows it. Go the extra mile like you did when you dated her. Men be men. The Bible says love her like Christ loved the church. What do you, look at what all he did for us. Now he's saying you need to treat your wife the same way. If, if now some of y'all was to give her some flowers, she might kick over of a heart attack and then you'd have to find a new one. <laughs> But that's my challenge to y'all. Men, show her. Hey, if you can't afford it, why don't you cook a meal for her? Wow. Okay. But now, it's not just the men. Because it says, women, you need to submit yourselves unto your own husbands. You want to know what guys are built on? I'm going to admit it. I don't know about y'all. But we are built on ego. Am I right? They don't call it the alpha female. They call it the alpha male. Right? <laughs> we are built on ego. <laughs> but we, that is how a guy is wired. Are we not, guys? Let's just be honest. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> and see what that does when you show him reverence and respect. That's, that feeds what he needs. 
And here's where a lot of, and you know what, ladies, you can do the same thing for the guys. You can shock him every now and then. Well, that's the reason she bought them, so you'll give them right back to her. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, we are wired a certain way, and it was the Jesus. I mean, the Bible says it. Jesus put it in the Bible for that certain way. He knew how men were wired. He knew how women were wired, and he says, "This is what they need. Give it to them. Give them what they need. Be there for each other." And you know what? All that happened during Dayton. But we just got so comfortable with each other and really taking each other for granted. And I know this one's going to come back and bite me. No one show this one to Jessica. <laughs> uh, that's the reason we made her, so I didn't want her to hear this one. <laughs> no, really, in all, jo in all honesty, no joking, give each other what they need. But it don't just stop there. It don't just stop there. What does it say in chapter 6? Children, oh, your, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now, kids, I know you don't ex see it right now. Teenagers, I know you don't see it right now. But your parents have been through stuff, and they're just trying to protect you from what they went through. You need to listen and respect. And the Bible says this is the first commandment with promise. Kids, instead of talking back to your parents, give them what they need. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You want to know, you want to see their jaw drop? What happened there? What if, the, what if the kids were to do something nice for the parents? You know what melts my heart and makes me want to go the extra mile for Addie and Dawson? When I come home and Addie makes me a card and says, Daddy, you're the best daddy in the world. And I'm like, well, let me just go back to work and work another 12 hours so I can get her something good. You know what? It will make, if you show that respect and that love toward your parents, it will make them want to do so much more for you. I'm, ta I'm speaking from experience, y'all. I've been on both sides of the fence on this one. But, and this is not just busting the kids. This is something we miss as parents. He says, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, I do read in the Bible where, it's supposed to, where it says, render honor to whom honor is due. That is a twofold commandment. Not only is it telling the parents, I mean the kids, you need to honor your parents. But you know what else it's saying? Parents, you need to be honorable. You need to live up to that honor. If you're wanting your kids to honor you, you need to live up to that. And what does he say? What does he say? Going back to our original uh, passage, this is what he said. He says, you cannot serve the Lord. Because basically because of all the gods you've got in there. You've got to clean your house out. See, they knew. They knew what their parents were serving behind closed doors. And we may not be serving Buddha or Allah or Muhammad or any of those other fake gods. We're serving the true God. But your, your kids see what you do behind closed doors too. They see who you are that nobody else sees. So be that person behind closed doors that you want your kids to be. It's one of those do as I do, not as I say do. We need to live by example. I know this is a hard message. And I know I got beat up on, uh, before I ever preached it. So y'all don't feel too bad. This old preacher took a beating himself on this one. But any preacher will tell you it has to hit you before it can hit the congregation. If it does not hit here first, if you're just preaching a message to preach a message, it's going to fall flat. But I'm telling you, this message hit Derek Knight. I should be treating my wife better. And it says, provoke not your children, ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Let's just don't do stuff just to make the kids upset. I know a lot of parents that do that. 
What we're saying is, if we're going to get our country back, it's not happening next Tuesday. It's a good step in the right direction if we get the right one in. I will say that. It's a good step in the right direction. But that's not what's going to get our country back. What's going to get our country back is for us to start doing what the Word of God says. Start at home. You want to know what? We've had some great services around here at Leatherwood. We've felt the Spirit of God. But I'm telling you, if we go all in, as in it's happening at home 100% of the time, and then come in here, you'll really see what kind of services we'll have. And you know what? We'll start making an impact on our community. It's got to start somewhere. It's got to start somewhere. Why not here? Why not here? Why don't we start doing the number one focus? I'm going to focus on my home. I'm going to focus on loving my kids. And I'm going to be honest with you. This old preacher is going to speak the truth. I've spoken to my kids sharply before. And then God pricked my heart. You've got to be stern with your kids. I understand that. But there is a point where you can go overboard. And I have found myself at times go overboard because I've had a bad day. We, I think if we're honest, we're all that way. And God's pricked my heart, and I've started focusing more on that. You know what? You only have your kids for so long. It's a very short time. Blink of an eye, and they're gone. They're, living, they're moved out, and they have their own family. Enjoy the moments you have now. Enjoy them. Don't let it be a war zone. Yes, You've got to keep them in line. Yes, you've got to correct them. But there's a difference in correcting it and making it a war zone. Don't let home be the war zone. The home is where they're supposed to feel safe. And I'm afraid that's what's happened to a lot of our kids. Why are we losing a lot of our kids? They don't even feel like home is their safe zone. School becomes their safe zone. I'm not saying don't let everything ride. You've got to raise them up right. But let them know you're doing it out of love. The reason I'm doing this is because I love you. You never know whose kid that might be. What if that was one of your children in that ambulance going down the road? You were saying, oh, if I could just tell them one more time. And I'm going to ask you now. There is a young lady, I'm not going to say her name. But she was told today she had brain cancer. Not going to name her name. She's worried about her kids. Young lady. And I ask that you pray for her. That they'll find it ain't the really aggressive type. But what if that's yours? Are you happy with how your family is right now? I'm not talking about Leatherwood Baptist Church. I'm not talking about Washington. Are you happy with your home life right now? Are you happy how you as a husband and wife treat each other? Are you happy as how parents and children t treat each other? If you're not happy with that, do something about it. It's not too late right now, but if this falls on deaf ears and we go back to the house and the home life stays the same way, you know what? The churches are going to stay the same way and our country is going to even get worse because it's just going to be even more confusion. He said, you're going to have to make a choice. And he says today. He didn't say, let's stew on this a little bit. He says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. And service... A lot of times we think service is right here. Service is before you ever make it to here. Service starts at the house. 